My entire life, I always believed that at some point, I would get to a point in my life where I was really, really happy. And I always thought that I had to do this next thing in order to get there. I had to get fit and get a six pack and get muscles so that eventually girls would start to like me. In middle school and in high school, I was a really introverted kid. I was extremely shy. I wasn't good at talking to girls. I wasn't very socially savvy. And I felt a large degree, I think, of depression and anxiety and unhappiness. I didn't understand the system that I was living in. I didn't understand what I was gonna do for a living someday. I had a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unhappiness. And within my brain, I always thought that there would come a point in time where I would eventually be happy. I would eventually get a six pack, get abs, get muscles, and girls would instantly like me when I took off my shirt at the beach, or they would just like me as a result of having really cool friends and learning about social skills or they'd finally like me once I earned enough money, I had my own business, I was a wealthy man, of course they would like me then. Of course, other people would also accept me for who I am. I was always trying to improve myself and always trying to get to this one point where I could finally rest on my laurels and be like, wow, finally, I am a happy person. Finally, I'm enjoying my life. I like my work, I like my job, I have a girlfriend that I like. I always thought I would get to this point where all of a sudden, all of this would be unlocked. Like, I'm invited into this really exclusive nightclub where there's a line out the door, but I'm walked to the front of it, I'm allowed to enter, and it's just this freaking awesome party going on, and finally people would be, you know, uh, giving me high fives and giving me fist bumps and being like, yeah man, you made it to the party, and I'd be able to enjoy everything that I created in life. About three years ago, I realized that that was false. I realized that that was a false premise. And the reason is that I had achieved a lot of the things that I initially set out to do. Those things like being able to sleep with lots of girls, having a girlfriend that I like, um, having a body that I'm proud of, that I'm not shy about showing off at the beach, or just being shy of my overall physical appearance in general. I was also getting to a good point in my life when it comes to business and earning enough money to support myself in New York City. And despite all of these great things that were happening, all the things that externally should give me reasons to be happy, I was freaking miserable. I felt depressed, I felt unhappy, I was always criticizing myself, I was drinking a lot, I was engaging in bad activities and bad habits, and I just had really bad negative thought loops about who I was, my potential, and I almost had this, this anxiety that I had to keep achieving and had to keep going and going, otherwise I would never eventually get that life that I've always been dreaming of and unlock these dreams that I have and find Finally, be happy. I distinctly remember this one time where I was talking with my friends when I had just done a really good month in terms of revenue for my business. Things were going well. I was dating. And I was telling my friends so excitedly about this and they were very supportive. But at the same time, it didn't change the way that the world was viewing me. For some reason, maybe because I was just young and not very mature, I thought that everyone would instantly start to like me. Everyone would be clamoring to want to be my friend. You know, once you're doing well in business, I also thought that just women would instantly flood in the doors and like want to get to know you and know what your name is and all these different things. And it just wasn't the case. While my own ecosystem, my own life was going well, no one really cared. People didn't really notice it. And when they did, yeah, they were supportive, but it didn't make a massive factor in whether or not they liked me as a person. So when my beliefs and, and my thoughts about how the world worked sort of collided with with how the world actually works, when my, my beliefs collided with reality, that's when I started to feel a little bit unsettled. And I realized I actually had to study this area of my life if I wanted to see progress. The only way I've seen progress in any area of my life is when I really became a student of that area. So that's what I did. I started to pick up books on emotional intelligence. I started to read books on social skills, how to actually improve your happiness, understanding your own emotions as a man. I really dived into all of that. So with this video, I wanna share with you three things that made a tangible impact in my life when it comes to my own happiness. And ironically, 
these things tend to not even be tied to my level of achievement or the things that I've done in my life. I wanna start this off with a quote. So this quote is by Daniel Goleman, the author of Emotional Intelligence. When your moods are averaged over a series of weeks, months, or years, it tends to reflect your overall general sense of well-being. So what this means is, if you are to think back to last week or last month or last year, you're not really gonna remember too many uh, uh, individual events or too many really cool things that you did last year like maybe maybe a handful but your overall recollection of that period in your life is going to be summed by the general moods that you were feeling so if overall you were pretty happy throughout that year you'll tend to look back on that year and be like man that was a freaking epic year of my life or if you were feeling a lot of anxiety and apprehension and fear during one particular month you'd be like Oh man, last month was really, really rough. When I read this quote and I read this book, which I recommend everyone out there reading, Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman. I'll include a link down below if you wanna check it out. When I read this, I started to think to myself, okay, how can I influence my general sense of moods throughout a week, throughout months, and also throughout years? And I also started to wonder, hmm, I wonder if, if I just faked happiness, if I just tend to view things in a bit more of a rosy glow, have a bit more of a positive viewpoint on the things that are happening in my life, would that translate into me having a, a better sense of overall well-being about my life? I started to do things like I'd begin to work on my body language. I would start smiling more when I go out in public and even when I'm at home. I would have better posture. I wasn't always hunched over or I didn't have closed body language or I'd actually make eye contact with people when I was talking with them. I would also do things to affect my emotions in other ways. So rather than listening to something like EDM music, which gets me really anxious, but also so pumped up or maybe sad music at night when I feel a little bit more lonely, I begin to listen to positive and upbeat music, the kind of music that just makes me smile. And while initially it felt kind of weird at first to listen to this kind of music in the early morning or at night to sort of increase my mood, over time, it did make me begin to smile more. It began to make me think of the day on the opportunities and smile the fact that it's bright out, there are beautiful trees, that going outside, going to my backyard, it's just wonderful to be in the open air. And then I started to experiment with other ways to impact my mood, like doing cardio more at the gym, or going out there and, and trying out different events that are in the New York City area, going to meetup events, going to cool food tastes, Things, these different things to get me out of my element. What this led to inadvertently is me actually improving my overall happiness, but it started with faking it to a certain degree and putting myself in the best position to be happy. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This did not work 100% of the time. There were times when I felt really anxious because of stuff that was going on at work. There were times where I felt really afraid for things that might happen in the future. I felt very lonely at times, or maybe I was just feeling sad or depressed press, but the important thing is that over time, I was steadily seeing progress in my overall sense of well-being when it comes to my life. By introducing things like meditation and affirmations, beginning to sculpt the thoughts that I have, and to not really listen to those other parts of my brain that are having negative self-talk, very slowly, I started to see improvements in my confidence, improvements in my overall sense of happiness, and also other people started to get a sense that I'm actually having a really good time, that I'm happy for whatever reason at this point in my life. What I came to realize is that my happiness is not directly tied to the things that I am achieving in life, the things that I'm doing in life, or even my outward reality. Instead, it's entirely dependent on the filter that I use in order to filter this reality. The filter that I use to make a decision about what does that event mean, or how do I feel about this thing that happened, and really sculpting my perspective on where I am in life my attitude towards it, and my mindset. Now, I can I know that might sound a little bit woo-woo talking about mindset and talking about positivity, but we all have people in life where if you put them in the same situation, one person would find some way to bitch and complain about some aspect. Maybe you're at this restaurant. They're complaining about the service. They're complaining about how their waiter is not attentive. They're complaining about, oh, what are we gonna be doing later? What's the plan for today? They're always finding something to 
latch onto, to get nervous, to get anxious about, or to complain. I'm willing to bet that you also have other friends in your life who have an opposite effect. You put them in that same exact environment and rather than thinking about the waiter, rather than thinking about the things that are lacking in that situation, they'll start joking around, they might talk with a busboy, they might talk with people that are in other tables, they find a way to make it fun. These people are in the same exact environment but because of their underlying beliefs, because of the operating system that they're using, they're having a tremendously different effect on their own emotions. One person is complaining about the situation and kind of looking for other people to give them reasons to feel better. The other person is appreciating the situation, finding the things that they can feel positive about and pumping up their own state. And as a result, other people's emotional states as well. I am not perfect at this, but this is what I strive to do in many social situations. I'll try to get everyone feeling better and in that way also make myself feel better about the situation. Emotional happiness comes from appreciation and really tuning into the environment that you're in. When you're at work and you're trying to accomplish things, everyone feels stressed. I don't care what type of work you have, have, if you look at the gestures that someone has when they're on their laptop, even doing something that they like, they're going to be doing things like they might be tugging on their beard, they might be scratching their head, they might be going like this, they might be squinting their eyes, you know, they might be looking around every once in a while, checking their phone. Everyone feels stressed at work or a certain degree of stress, even if they like their work. Because your brain is solving problems, that's why you're gonna feel a certain degree of anxiousness always at work. You're tackling challenges, you're coming up against obstacles, and while it also might be enjoyable for you, you naturally don't want your entire life to be in that kind of an emotional state. It's very difficult to reach that state of happiness when you are in a logical, problem-solving working mode. And the reason is that the, the root of happiness comes with appreciation. So what is appreciation? Appreciation is very simply tuning in to the environment that you are in right now and thinking of things that can make you happy or make you feel grateful or make you feel positive in this environment. There are certain illicit drugs like marijuana that can actually prime you to be in this kind of an emotional state or drugs like alcohol which can put you in an emotional state where you're more likely to be in the moment, where you're more likely to say what's on your mind, to interact with other people, or when it comes to weed, when it comes to marijuana, you're looking and taking the appreciation of the details that are around you. It's kind of weird in our society to do that unless you're on some kind of like illicit substance. Like if you're just talking to random people, that's kind of normal when you're drinking or you're out with your friends, you maybe have a shot, you're talking with some other people, you're joking joking around, you're being loud, but it's weird to do that when you're not on an illicit substance. What you can actually do is you can observe human behavior when they're under these substances and you can almost replicate it to a certain degree. So maybe being a little bit more gregarious, maybe having less of a filter, having less self-judgment, it's going to actually improve your emotions, bring your emotional state up and make you happier in that environment. Or taking a drug like weed, just looking at the surrounding cool trees, the amazing blue sky, Look at the detail in the different furniture that's around you. Feel the coolness of the air if you're walking outside. Take a second to feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. This is when you're in a very receptive state of mind and when you're in a state of mind, we're going to be appreciating the environment that you're in, which leads to happiness. When you're fully in a single moment, when you're allowing all of your senses to be moved and touched by that moment, it's nearly impossible to you then to have other kinds of thoughts, have problem solving thoughts, have thoughts about worrying about the future, having thoughts about anxiousness about the past. When you're fully in the present moment, it is impossible to think about anything else. And that's when you will be the most happy. So my prescription for happiness is that it is, it, anyone can tap into this. Anyone can be happy regardless of your circumstances, regardless of the things that you've achieved in life, regardless of who you are or what's happened to you. The main thing here is that there is a difference in mindset. 
when you're trying to be happy, you're in more of a be in the moment, be receptive, go with the flow, don't have any self-judgment, be willing to interact with other people, appreciate the moment. That kind of a mindset is not gonna get you very far in the workplace environment or if you're trying to achieve things in life. That's why a lot of these people who are really happy maybe and are like surfers or you're a stoner or something, they may be really cool, they're happy, they're chilling there, they're enjoying life, but they're not very successful. On the flip side, you have people who are very, very hyper successful, who are way more successful than I am, who have massive things that are going on in their life, whether that's business, whether that's being a celebrity, it doesn't matter, they're successful. But at the same time, they are not happy. And the reason is that the operating system that you're using to become happy is remarkably different from the operating system that you need to be running in the background if you want to achieve things and solve problems in your life. I hope that you found this video to be helpful for you, looking at these as two different things and sort of modalities that you switch between. If you're a computer programmer, this is kind of like running one program in order to get one result, which is happiness, or running another program in order to get another result, which is achieving things in life and solving problems. If you want more videos like this, take a second to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I have a lot more videos out there on things like improving your masculinity, being more confident, making friends, etc. I can link up some of those videos in the description down below. Again, my name is Sal, and I'll see you next time.